I've decided that it is time for us to ride a bicycle today, <laughs> says the toes. Says... <laughs> I'm sorry. Do the, do the toes vote on it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the the big toe gets all to say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 You're like. Does the like big Iowa. toe get veto power? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. If they argue, then they can go to total war. <laughs> Welcome, well, welcome to polypsych.org. Almost there, just one more time. Welcome to polypsych.org. Facts and statistics, mm -hmm. but that, but at the end of the day, every single parent is pregnant. Every, every pregnant, every, different. Every pregnant, every parent every is parent pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and every pregnant is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh that that book got into a lot of trouble not for calling parents dumb <laughs> that's just you the uh the uh what they expect when you're expecting got in trouble for being too lenient and when it was like hey if you drink like if you're an alcoholic before you're pregnant and you want to have one glass of wine during your pregnancy yeah, go for it it should be okay oh you smoke like try to cut down a half a pack a day like it was so yeah. it's so lenient towards mothers that it's like ah, maybe to a fault like, I don't know if it's to a fault, honestly. No, I, it's like, definitely you go, to a fault. For sure, don't drink during a pregnancy. I, don't wouldn't, smoke. I wouldn't be okay with the doctor who spoke straight out of the What to Expect book. Like That would be um, a little bit irresponsible on, on the doctor's part. But as for a book that's sitting by the nightstand or mm -hmm. on the nightstand by the bed, I don't want something that's going to like terrify me or make me feel like I'm a bad parent every every chapter. You know? So, like, I can kind of appreciate how the author of this book is careful to acknowledge the the warning signs and the precautions and things like that without damning every person, you know, every mom who has who does any of these things. Like, because it's sitting by her bed. It's like the last thing she reads at night or it could be, you know, or it's something that like a mother, a, a, a mother to a pregnant mom is reading and that could make her overly concerned so like as a doctor no don't don't be like ah, you know do what you can to quit mm. no as a doctor i would expect the doctor to say no you need to quit like now like yesterday but doctors are always overly cautious i don't think in this case i think in this case you probably should not smoke or drink during pregnancy but like in a lot of cases like ufc fighters will go into a, a doctor and they'll be like uh yeah you have a fractured orbital so what what do you do He's like, yeah, I'm a fighter. Oh, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, but like but that's, that's what profession. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're they're overly cautious. Don't enough. they have doctors though? Like specific doctors? Yeah, they have no. Nope. No. UFC fighters a lot of times they'll have like just a regular doctor. I mean, you, you can have a sports trainer or like a specialized doctor, like, hey, he only deals with MMA fighters. He only deals with athletes. But like odds are you're probably gonna go to a regular doctor who's gonna say, Oh man, you it seems like you're having a lot of uh a lot of cuts and scrapes and <laughs> bruises and fractured orbitals and some broken collarbones. Mm -hmm. You should just stop fighting. As a matter of fact, you you for sure have head trauma. Just stop doing that entirely. Which is like not an option for these guys. Mm -hmm. But going back to these uh particular uh doctors, um people will take in the idea that, hey, my aunt, she smoked all the way through her pregnancy, mm. so I'll probably be, be okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, I hate the fact that anecdotal evidence is <gasps> taken for, like, a reason like for it. Yeah. 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 It's so, like, this is oh, what well, happened to my uncle, so it should be okay. Mm. Yeah, I don't believe the cigar thing causes cancers. I, I, don't, I don't think that smoking causes cancer because my grandfather smoked his entire life. Like, he had constantly had a cigar in his mouth, and he lived to be 95. Yeah. So I'm not buying all this research. And it's just really unfortunate that the, the there's, like, a logical lapse in, like, some people's mind where they just can't fathom that statistics are more powerful than that story about your grandpa. Yeah, I would I would respect and 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 accept any the person who says like I acknowledge the facts and eh, I'm gonna risk it. Yes, I would like I respect that person's position much better. I, like I'll back off and leave them the hell alone. Mm -hmm. Like I don't agree with what they're doing, but 
like at least they are they, they're, they're telling me they're aware like i get it and i'm gonna go i'm gonna go forward anyway because at that point there's nothing you can do or say like if they've if they've told you that they know what they're risking and they're doing it anyway then they're consciously uh, like accepting the, their fate one way or the other they're accepting their consequences one way or the other. Right. But when you take this logistical, like, you just throw all logic out of the window mm-hmm. and say, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't believe it. I don't believe, <laughs> like, it. I don't believe the facts. I don't believe the statistics because, like, Aunt, 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 great aunt Seal was like, whatever. So is that a form of cognitive dissonance where it's like, I need a, I need a reason to justify this action? There was actually a weird, um, dang it, I wish I knew what article it was, but there was a... Uh, Hey, there's research done that suggests that your decisions start in your stomach and the biome that's inside of your stomach. And then your your actual like frontal lobe decides after the fact. Your so, stomach. Like, you're, yeah. So you're not making the decision your stomach does. So just imagine. By delving deep inside the intestinal jungle of bacteria in our intestines, we've begun to find some incredible discoveries that are changing our appreciation for bacteria forever. See, our bellies and brains are physically and biochemically connected in a number of ways. First of all, our intestines are physically linked to our brain through the vagus nerve, which sends signals in both directions. Interestingly, even though this is severed, our intestines can still continue to function fully without a connection to the brain, suggesting they have a mind of their own. Imagine you've just eaten chocolate or won the lottery, sat an exam or just been fired. Imagine your thoughts, your emotions, your behavior and your health could be controlled by a hidden organ that you knew little about. Is that only But it's not just for food. Eat? No, it's not just for food. It's like, I'm angry. Huh. Like, you're stuck in your stomach. Like, there's a couple of different emotions. It's gotta be like the way that your stomach, like, absorbs hormones. I have no idea. Like, I, if you've got no anger, then obviously your, like, pituitary gland, your adrenal glands are secreting. You know what? I'm gonna, look, in, I'm gonna look into the research and then we're gonna do a podcast on it. Yeah. Um, next week because it is it is fascinating like cause you, it is literally it's the gut like, instinct it's the whole gut instinct hilarious. theory where yeah. that comes from there was even even uh, during uh, I want to say the Roman times like the Roman era I'm so I'm butchering this theory but it's like it's uh, they they used to say that like your thoughts were in your stomach like yeah. your uh, like your your mind or whatever it was in your gut yeah, well, what does your gut tell you yeah oh, there's like a million cliche yeah phrases that uh, start seeing tum tum yeah yeah but if you think about it we're like one giant biome where you have more uh bacteria living on your skin than there are people like in the world i mean like you you are many many things and if you think about us as like single cell organisms and then that single cells single cell partners with its neighbor so that it can absorb the sugar in its in its atmosphere, the stuff and the stuff around it, and then that uh, that now multi cell organism absorbs another and another and another, and becomes increasingly complex. And then fast forward a million years, and you have a human being like that. What we are isn't just like man. It's not just. It's not just like what man is. Isn't just like. A single thing, like you are the result of many, many organisms coming together to form this giant thing. So when maybe when something in a specific sector of the body decides something, it shoots up the signal and it has priority one when it comes to making a decision that day. I've decided that it is time for us to ride a bicycle today, <laughs> says the toes. Says- <laughs> I'm sorry. Do the, do the toes vote on it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the the big toe gets Majority all of the say. Wins. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. yeah. You're like. Does the like big Iowa. toe get veto power? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. If they argue, then they can go to total war. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. That's that's the that's the show for today. The uh, go to iTunes and subscribe to the Polycyc Podcast or wherever you get your podcast. No, don't go anywhere. Go to iTunes. Go to iTunes and subscribe to the Polycyc Podcast. This is your host, Anthony Lindsay. And Stephanie Moreno.